found that clip on YouTube. Golf's a pretty funny game, isn't it? Except, of course, when it's you that's uh, screwing up all the time um, and not playing the best golf that you know you can play. And it's frustrating when that happens, isn't it? But I'm going to help you with that today. Uh, I've made for you a small movie, uh, a quick video, that's going to show you how to hit the ball better off the tee, strike the ball more consistently so you don't screw up, and uh, maybe even get you a few extra yards down the fairway, okay? Yeah, that was great. Hi. My name is Daryl Klassen and I'm a PGA golf professional here in Southern California. You may or may not have ever heard of me, but I've been teaching golf for over 40 years. And quite frankly, I'm really pretty darn good at it. I just got an email from Azel in Holland. And Azel wrote and asked me, he said, I've got, I have great difficulties, Daryl coming from the inside on the downswing. Any tips on how to achieve this? Well, it really is, and there is for everybody else out here. I'm going to tell you, we tend in golf to come from, we really tend in golf to swing across our lap. That's what happens. When we're swinging across our lap, our target is here to dress. But as our lap begins to turn during the swing, we're going left. And the shoulder following everything that's going on, it's just problems. And that's why we need to feel like we come from the inside out with our path of our swing. Probably one of the, the, the biggest questions is the coming over the top issue, and it's because people don't understand path uh, in a golf swing, and they don't really, haven't been taught how that relates to the body motion that's taking place. It'd probably be easier for me to do this out at the golf course where I teach. I'm getting ready to head out that direction anyhow. Why don't you come along with me and let me and take a look. Hi, Daryl Classen here again. <laughs> uh, just wanted to chat with you a few more minutes here in the car. I like to come to you like this once in a while because it lets me do something on my travel time. You can see all the trees in the background going by. These are orange trees, uh, big orange crop area. We're right next to the High Sierras. I teach the golf course that's very, very, very low key. It's not a country club, it's not private, and it's not fancy. But due to that, it lets me do all the things I need to do. A private club and a busy golf course would not allow me to do the things I like to do to teach and to really take care of my students. Uh, on the way to the golf course today, I just thought I'd talk to you for a couple minutes about equipment. You need to, sometime in your experience, you need to decide what you really want out of your golf game. Uh, golfers ask me quite frequently which golf ball should they use, and they're buying like I call them pop rocks. <laughs> They're buying top flights at Costco or something for three dollars for four thousand balls or something like that. That's so darn cheap. And they're hard as a rock. And the hard golf balls are made to not spin as much, so they won't fly quite as far. But on a hard running fairway, they will turn and uh, they'll turn loose and release a little bit, and they'll roll farther. So you pick up a few extra yards of roll out of the golf ball on your tee shot if you're in the fairway. Of course, I never like the ball to run too far on the tee shot because if I happen not to hit it in the fairway, I didn't want it rolling farther and farther into the rough. But if you're going to play a hard, inexpensive golf ball, which is fine, it's okay, it's your prerogative. And if that fits your budget and that's your lifestyle, it's not a problem at all. But if you're going to play a hard golf ball that's going to roll in the fairway, you've got to understand it's going to also roll when you hit the greens. So golfers ask me, gosh, how come I can't make the ball stop like the touring pros do? Well, there are several reasons we're going to talk about here for the next couple minutes. But among those reasons are the fact you're, you're playing a golf ball that's as hard as a cotton pick and a rock. So you can't spin the thing off your club face. 
Uh, so what you want to do is you want to begin to test and experiment with different kind of balls. I know if you get up into into stuff like Titleist Pro V and things like that, you can get up into a $60 dozen golf ball and that's very expensive. You're not required to play that either. But the reason those golf balls are so expensive is because they spin more. They have it. They have the highest spin rates of any golf balls uh, on the market. And touring pros like that, for the very reason of the thing that you asked me the questions about, they want to be able to make the ball stop on the green. It doesn't have to spin backward. That always impresses the amateurs, but trust me, it doesn't impress the touring pros because they can't control how much it's going to spin back. And you see a lot of good shots like this particular week, the U.S. Open's on it at uh, Bethpage on the black course. Had some rain. I've seen several shots come in and hit right next to the stick and back up 10, 15, 20 feet. And if the ball would have just stopped all as close to the pin, they'd have had a nice short little tap in putt. So backing the ball way up isn't necessarily the greatest thing you'd ever want on a golf course. But anyhow, the softer the ball, the more it's going to spin. Well, the more it's going to spin on your tee shot, the longer it's going to fly in the air and the shorter it's going to roll. Uh, the same is true around the green. So you might want to try something like a, a medium-priced uh, Precept. I know make some golf balls. They've got one that's, that's classified a lady and one that's a laddie. Those golf balls have a decent amount of spin. Uh, I don't do a lot of equipment anymore right now, but there used to be a lot of balls like the Noodle. I don't know what they've replaced that with. I haven't seen it in a while, but there are a lot of golf balls that have a, a medium amount of spin, so you get a good enough release and roll on the fairway and you get decent bite on the greens. It's not too bad so your ball doesn't just run away from you. <clears throat> I like to play stuff like the top flight or the uh, top flight. I like to play stuff like the, the uh, Titleist Pro V because I want that kind of spin on my ball around the greens. I've actually used to hit the ball very far. Now that I'm older, I don't hit it very far at all. And in order for me to score my best, I do not need my drive, my tee shot to roll an extra five or ten yards. I need my shots from inside 100 yards to stick and bite where I want them, so I can put them close enough to make the putt easily. Now the other thing that happens with the average amateur that blows my mind, you will, you know, the, all the touring pros have a caddy out there. And this caddy's carrying the clubs all the time. And all of you see him carry the club and wash the golf ball when he's getting ready to putt and all that stuff. But I don't know how many times you really pay attention to the fact that the caddy is washing the golf clubs. He's keeping the, he's wiping down the grip almost after every shot with, shot with a damp part of the towel. He's also scrubbing down or just making sure that the club face uh, of every, the face of every golf club in that bag is absolutely clean. There's a reason why the USGA and the RNA, the Royal Ancient, have rules that describe and determine and limit the amount, the way the grooves are made and what they can and can't do because you could make grooves on a golf club to make a golf ball spin so much it's not even funny. And there are limitations on that. So those grooves on the golf course for your advantage, on the golf club for your advantage to spin the ball. So you need to be able, uh, now you can kind of see a golf course showing up. You can see all this, some of the weeds and the gray and the green and the brown and the trees and all kinds of stuff. But if you've got the grooves on your golf club nice and clean, then you're going to be able to produce the max amount of spin possible for you and your club selection and the golf ball that you're using. So, sorry about the rough spot in the road there. So you need to be able to get your golf club as clean as possible so you can spin the ball to the best of your ability. That's really, really, really important. Uh, so, two things. Select a golf ball that works well for you that accomplishes a part of your game that you want. And then number two, use a uh, clean golf club. Keep your golf club clean. When I play golf, I take half of my towel and get the things pretty cotton picking wet and I make sure that I clean my club face before and after every golf shot. And I keep my grips clean so they're tacky and I can hold on to them easily without squeezing the club too tightly. All of that plays into your ability to control your golf shots. <laughs> Hi, we're here at the golf course finally. As you can see, it's not too fancy around here. 
But we've got some beautiful, beautiful mountains. You just, this is a gorgeous place, whether it looks like or not to you. Aza wanted to know about this coming over the top thing and <clears throat> swinging from the outside in to his stance all the time. And I want to make this real brief and help you out because none of these are very long. I just want to answer the question, get you helped, and get on to something else because it doesn't take long. The game's so simple and easy. What I'm going to do is turn my back to you a little bit but keep my feet in decent alignment and I'm going to swing the club out this direction in relation to my lap and my hips. I'm swinging the club out here so as I rotate now the swing is coming to you so if I were to swing the golf club out in this direction in relation to off my right leg then as I rotate now all of a sudden the golf club's coming down the target line and Azel, what you're doing that's common is you're here and you're swinging across your lap, but your lap's moving, so you're swinging left. And it's real simple. All you have to do to cure that is don't worry about your swing. Just take the club over there. Feel like you're swinging out there in relation to you. Now, don't feel like you're swinging out there in relation to there. <laughs> you can't do that. You're just swinging out there in relation to you so that when you rotate, now you're swinging down the target line where you want to be. So if I were standing here, when I rotate in relation to my lap, I've got to be swinging over there. I'm going to show you that from the back side or from the other angle for a moment or two. If I'm aiming here, I've got to feel like I swing over here so that as I rotate, that takes all of this to the target. But what's happening is we're swinging across our body, so as we rotate, we end up going left here, and that we can't swing out here unless we do what I talk about all the time. You have to be tilted. The human body cannot swing out there from a straight or a left tilted spine. It can only do it from a right tilted spine. So, Azel, first thing you want to do is get a little extra weight on your back foot, tilt your spine so that you can turn your left shoulder, let your head move. If your head doesn't move away from the ball, you can't swing where the Turian pros swing. Their head moves. Now you swing out to the right to your body, which is down the target line, and you've got a golf swing. All right? Good enough. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to take a little look at this. While I'm here, that was so much fun. I'm going to shoot another one or two and answer a few more questions. So if you'll go.